Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tupvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating these vector swirls in Adobe Illustrator. Now I'm using Illustrator CS3, but there's not really any reason why you shouldn't be able to follow this even using CS2 or CS. So, and actually probably Illustrator 10 as well. So you should be able to follow along with this regardless of what version of Illustrator you have going back for several years now. We're going to create this vector swirl object converted to a brush and then we're actually going to learn how to uh, create excuse me another type of vector swirly swooshy something or other and how you can you know begin assembling some sort of masterpiece artwork that you have in mind so that's what we're going to take a look at in this video it's actually pretty simple to do but maybe not quite done the way you think but whatever way these are pretty popular ways to go about creating swirls and swooshes and everything else you want to call them. I'm just going to start by going file like I just did, new document, and here width 640, height 480, and I'm just going to set the landscape orientation. Hit OK. And here is our document. I'm going to collapse this doc so we have more space to work with. And the first thing I want to do is grab the spiral tool that is probably hiding underneath the line segment tool for you. So just click and hold and grab the spiral tool. Next come to the bottom of the toolbar right down to this corner and we're going to select the fill and that brings that to the foreground. Note my color panel just opened. Ignore that. You can collapse it again if you want. And we're going to select the little slash button, the none. The hotkey for that actually is the backslash as Illustrator is telling me in that little tool tip. We're just going to select the slash button which clears the fill. It only gives us a stroke which is what we want. So we're going to click and drag with the spiral tool. Now you can see I've been playing around with the spiral tool and it doesn't really look like a spiral. You can use your up and down arrow keys to increase the amount of spiral or decrease the amount of spiral. I want there to be a decent amount of spiral here so I am going to hit my up arrow keys several times like I just did and let go. Now that we have this spiraling line we want to make this a vine. This is actually very easy to do. All we have to do is it control C that would be command C on the Mac to copy and then control F or command F on the Mac to paste it in place technically command or control F is paste in front but it does the trick it pastes it right in place now I'm going to scroll this down a little bit holding down the shift and alt or shift and option if you're on the Mac keys and clicking and dragging that top anchor handle and I'm gonna let go now what I'm gonna do is grab my zoom tool and I'm just gonna zoom right in on the very center of the spiral now you can see these two ends. I want these two endpoints to meet up. So I'm just going to click and drag and virtually force them to meet up. That is going to let me have this nice spiral. Now before we can fill this with any color, we need to join these two shapes together, which is relatively easy. Grab the direct selection tool and highlight that end. That will select both of those anchor points. Go object, path, join. Note the hotkey, control J. That would be command if you're on the Mac. So control J. We join that right up. Now, I want to make these two ends about the same up and down. You can see how this one comes way further out this way, and this one is way further back here. We're going to grab the eraser tool right here and just come straight down and erase those lines to make them you know, nice and straight. Now again, with the direct selection tool, highlight both anchor points and command or control J. There we go. Wonderful. So we have a closed shape, which means we can now fill this and we won't have any strange lines appearing everywhere. So I'm just going to hit the double headed arrow here which flips my stroke and fill colors and we now have no stroke and only a black fill. Very nice. I can now grab this, size it down and I'm just going to move it up to the top of my screen. The next thing we need to do is create a vine for the spiral to be growing out of. So I'm going to grab the pen tool and I'm going to click and drag a long line toward the center of the stage holding on the shift key. That's going to keep it nice and flat. Okay. So we're going to pull about halfway out across the artboard. Let go, and then I'm going to come up above that dot and all the way over almost to the other side of the artboard and click, and again, holding shift, pull out a nice long tangent handle, like so. That's actually a little too long. I'm going to hold the Alt key and the Shift key and just pull it back a little bit. Just about like that. And again, use that double-headed arrow at the bottom of the toolbar to flip, fill, and stroke because we only want stroke at this point. Now what I'm going to do is select that, Command or Control C to copy, Command or Control F to paste it in front, and then hold down Shift and tap the right arrow key to move it over a little bit. Okay, we're creating our nice big vine. Now if I hit Z, which is the hotkey for the zoom tool. I'm going to zoom in on this end. You can see these ends are not joined. 
grab my direct selection tool. By the way, the hotkey for the direct selection tool is A. And we're going to select the end of these paths. Now, real quick, before I go any further, you may be wondering if you have not used Illustrator much before why I'm using the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow, as opposed to the selection tool, which is the black arrow. The direct selection tool allows you to actually select portions of your path. And here, all I want to do is select both of these anchor points so I can control or command J, join them. If I were to use the black arrow tool, when you use that, it selects the entire path. It doesn't allow you to select simply a small portion or even a single anchor point of a path. The direct selection tool allows you to directly select a portion of the path. So that's why I use that for this. Again, Z to grab the magnifying glass. And we're going to zoom in on the other side of this, grabbing the direct selection tool, select both of those end anchor points, Command or Control J to join them. And voila, we have a closed shape. Now I will use the selection tool and select this, hit that double-headed arrow to swap, fill, and stroke, and we get a nice, solid, sloping vine or branch. We are going to affix this swoosh to that, or the swirl. Really, this is more of a swirl than a swoosh. I'm going to tilt it a little bit, rotate it with the uh, selection tool here, and I'm going to drop it right onto that vine, just like that. Now, before I take care of this end that's sticking out, I'm going to duplicate this. Hold down the Alt key. If you're on the Mac, that would be Option. And just click and drag and drop anywhere. Now, I'm going to go Object Transform Reflect. And I want to reflect this along the horizontal axis because that flips it upside down. You can imagine the horizontal axis runs back and forth. That's the X axis. So this would flip around that almost as if you're watching a person flipping around a bar or you know anything really spinning around a bar. Whereas the vertical is more like you know a pole that goes from floor to ceiling or simply a swinging door. You're swinging from side to side. So we're, we're concerned with the horizontal axis because we want this to flip right over. Now I'm going to size this down, holding down Shift and Alt again to scale it to the middle and constrain proportions. Rotate it a little bit to make it uh, about the right you know, rotation that I'm looking for to make it look like it's going to roll right out of this vine. Now, when I zoom in here, you can see we definitely have problems because we have this whole chunk of this swirl sticking out here and this whole chunk sticking out up here. A couple things we need to do to take care of that's really super easy. First thing, select this arrow to open up our layer and just lock up this layer right here. Matter of fact, if I, I'm just going to click on this and hit panel options and make my thumbnails a little larger. You can see here I have my vine. I want to lock this up because I don't want to erase any of that. And that should clue you into what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the eraser tool and simply erase away that portion of the swirl. Now note when I did that, it looks like ah, I'm getting rid of a bunch of the vine. But as soon as I let go, you know, Illustrator shows me no, I haven't, I haven't damaged the vine. You have that on that locked layer. So also up here, I just want to erase that part of that swirl that's sticking out. So there we go. Perfect. That is exactly how we want it. Now I'm going to unlock the vine layer and I'm going to grab my selection tool and just highlight the entire thing. That's both swirls and the vine. I want to combine these into one shape so I can save them as a brush. So what I'm going to do is look to my Pathfinder panel. If you don't have the Pathfinder panel open, Window, Pathfinder. And under Pathfinders, not the Shape Mode section of the Pathfinders, there is this button Merge. Yeah, you can see there you go. Tooltip pops up, Merge. That's the one you want. It is going to merge these into one shape. You can see I only have one path layer now. It just took all three of those layers and combined them into one shape. So what I can do now is open up my brushes panel. Again, if that's not there, window brushes will do the trick. And at the bottom of the brushes panel, right here, we have this new brush button. We need to highlight that creation that we have made and just select that new brush button. And the brush type we want, new art brush. Hit OK. And here are some options. Don't be too intimidated by this dialog box. We're going to set the direction to left to right. Okay. And also, we're just going to check off proportional. And that's it. Just hit OK. And we can delete this. Now, the art brush allows us to do several things. Number one, it allows you to just come in here anytime you want and just drag and drop. So it is like a symbol. But not only is it like a symbol sitting in there, it is also brushable. It's a brush, so I mean, you'd hope it would be brushable. So I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm just going to paint the stroke. And you can see I get this kind of convoluted vine, but you can tell it is what we just created. Now, when you make this, I'm going to make a, an exaggerated S curve here. You can see how it's really rippled and not looking very great. You can usually come in and settle out and smooth out a lot of these bumps and ripples by going to the stroke dialog and just messing around with the weight. So let's try reducing the weight a little bit. 
maybe down to 125. That looks like it is making it look better. Now it looks like it's really mashed together. So it's just a matter of coming in here, you know, and keep messing around, see what you can come up with, or maybe there are things you can't quite fix. So that is how you work with that kind of brush. And you could also actually just create one of these swirls, make that your brush, and add that as an element wherever you want when you create these vines and you know, make a, a giant tree or swirly tree or anything like that, whatever you want to call it. So that is the swirls and vines portion. Um, let's take a look at the swooshes portion. Now this is another piece of artwork we're going to be creating and converting to a brush and we're going to be converting it to a brush because that's really going to make it very versatile. Now before I start making this, just as a quick note on this, you can get a lot of great ideas for bits of artwork you wish to create and convert to brushes or maybe just symbols to drag out later by finding stock photography of old ironwork, you know, wrought iron railings, iron gates, even just general metal artwork. You can get a lot of cool ideas and you can just bring the image into Illustrator and trace whatever pattern it is you like, fill it, make sure it's all nice and smooth, and then save it as a brush or a symbol for use later on. So, with that in mind, we're going to go on and create a rather generic looking swirly, swooshy, something or other. So I'm going to come down here and set my fill to black and grab the ellipse tool and hold down the shift key and just constrain this to a perfect circle and make it about that big. Now what I'm going to do is grab my direct selection tool and just select this one anchor point here on the right hand side of the ellipse and pull it straight out this way. About that big is fine. Now I'm going to hold down the Alt key. I'm going to select the tangent handle coming up. So this guy right here. Hold the Alt key and click and I'm going to drag it almost coming straight back into the circle splitting right through our almost teardrop looking shape now. You can see what that does. It's going to give me a nice sloping ramp. Then I'm going to select the tangent handle down here and I'm going to pull that down this way to kind of round out the bottom portion of this back end of what is now a semicircle or teardrop shape. And what that's going to do is continue this rounding of this front end semicircle all the way down to the point where it then kind of, you know, harshly ramps back, but then smoothly transitions back into the semicircle. So you can see the shape that we have. This shape we can do all kinds of things with. We could just convert it to a brush now, so let's do that. Let's open up the brushes panel, just hit new brush, and again, an art brush, hit OK. We're going to go right to left. Basically, the, we want to start at the narrow end and go toward the wide end, generally speaking, is how I like to work. So I'm going to have the arrow you know, going from right to left, and we're not going to leave this proportional. We're going to give this a lot of flexibility, so hit OK. And I can now delete this, but however, I don't want to delete this. What I'm going to do is take this, and I'm going to hold down my Shift key, and click, well, click on this upper anchor point. You can see I got the double-headed arrow and just rotate it upward like so. And maybe size it down a little bit. Again, holding the shift key to constrain proportions. And we could even convert some sort of, or convert this into some kind of artwork by holding on the alt key and duplicating this. And, you know, let's come in here and see if we can maybe add it there. Okay, it sort of makes this interesting shape. Maybe if we rotate it a little bit like that. Okay, maybe bring it down here a little more and maybe rotate it back out a little bit, okay, like that. All right, I'm going to duplicate this, and with this duplicate, I'm going to hit Object, Transform, Reflect, and I'm going to reflect along the vertical axis. I just want to flip it over that way. Hit OK, and I'm going to rotate this way like that, and that's actually a little bit too much. I'm going to bring it back this way, and just like that. So you can see there we've created almost you know, some kind of a cool maybe end of a flower. Matter of fact, what we can do here is with all three of these shapes, come to the Pathfinder panel and select Merge, and we now merge those together. I can size this way down, even further than that, something like that. And I can grab the Pen tool at this point, flip my fill and stroke, so I've got a nice black stroke, and I'm going to pull out of this. And you can see well, what I can do here is just create, well, actually I'm going to come around this way, create some sort of a plant or a floral looking plant thing. I'm going to up the stroke size quite a bit to really make it look like it is, you know, proportionate with that typical or that 
particular flower head or plant or whatever it is. It could be anything. So you can see how just messing with these shapes, you can get these interesting shapes that you can then convert into other things. I'm going to delete that, however, and we're going to work with this art brush. I'm just going to drag and drop one of them out here. And we can do all kinds of things with this. We could actually duplicate this and paste it in front. So that's Command or Control C and then Command or Control V and size it down and maybe make a smaller one sticking out down there maybe rotate it a little bit more Whoop. like so and we could select this and make this an art brush so here new art brush hit OK and again we're going from narrow to wide end so in this case it's left to right hit OK and let's delete this now what we can do with this stuff is grab our arc tool and we don't really have to have any filler stroke but I'm gonna select the stroke and I'm just gonna fill it with black and I'm gonna draw an arc now the up or down arrow keys give you an arcier arc or you know basically an arc that has more straightness to it and less of a bend you can see it just basically looks like one quarter of a rounded rectangle there hit the down arrow key and we have more of a rounded off arcing arc so I want the arcing arc that's why I use the arc tool now with this arc what we're going to do is simply select one of these two brushes I'm going to use the more complex one you can see we get this sort of strange looking shape but here again we're just going to go to the stroke panel and play around with the weight so I'm going to reduce the weight to about 0.5 points and there we go we have this nice shape now I can duplicate this shape, com shape command or control C command or control F to paste it in place and I'm just going to simply go object transform reflect I'm going to reflect it along the horizontal axis, hit OK, and I'm going to rotate it up like so. And I get this nice double shape. Now what I'm going to do is grab my spiral tool and draw a spiral. I'm going to hit the down arrow key several times though to make it a simpler spiral, like so. And I'm going to use the simpler art brush now. You can see what I have. It almost looks like a fish wrapping around inside of itself. We are going to decrease the weight again as we did before. Maybe increase to 0.75. That's not too bad. And I'm just going to drag and drop this maybe right here. Let's bring it off of that a little bit. Let me rotate it some. Bring this guy up. Drop him right in there. Just sort of, well, I still don't like that quite that much. Maybe more like that. And you can see that just by building or placing these together, you can get some really cool shapes. We could even duplicate this whole thing. Object transform reflected along the vertical axis. OK. And here we go. We've started creating some kind of artwork. Who knows what it could be? It could be anything. I'm actually going to move this up or over a little bit to make that line up nicely. So we have this sort of artwork that we're starting to put together. Now, what we need to do next is begin selecting pieces of this and going object, expand appearance and it is going to give us a whole group of shapes and paths now the best way to make sure that we can convert this safely to a solid color is to you know select another one and again expand the appearance and we would now select both groups of expanded appearance objects so we have these two remember this was just this bit and we duplicated it and flipped it so I want to select both of them and we're going to go to the pathfinder panel and merge them together so those are now one shape we could now change the color of that to, well, I don't know, let's say orange. Whoop. We don't want an orange stroke, we want an orange fill. Okay, sort of like that. It's more peachy than orange, but there we go, orange. And then this down here, again, we could just go expand appearance. And now when, in this case, is a perfect example. When you don't have an object to merge with, like for instance, if I don't want to merge with this, I want this to be a different color. If we were just to fill this now, we'd have problems because you can see this other path running here in the middle. We can get rid of this in a number of ways. We can simply use the direct selection tool and select it, or attempt to select it, I should say. Or we can come over here to the layers panel. I usually like to select the object first because in more complex pieces of artwork, you're going to have tons of layers. And just open that group up and select the path because that's that center path there. And just hit delete. That gets rid of that. Now you can color this wherever you want, whether or not you want it to be a darker orange or a pinker orange in that case, or whatever you want it to be. So there you go. That is how you create swirling, swooshing vector artwork. And really the sky's the limit. Once you begin making these shapes, you begin mixing those shapes, you can convert mixed shapes to art brushes, all kinds of things. Really the sky is the limit. 
So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly hope you learned something. Thank you very much for watching, and please go check out the site. That is www.tutvid.com. Thanks for watching.